everyone, welcome to Venus Pages. Today we have another poetry video. Today we're talking about The Forsaken Wife, doing a summary and author biography, a line by line analysis. This year I'm helping people prepare for the CIE English Literature GCSE exam 2022, and I am filming poetry videos for Songs of Ourselves, Volume 2, Part 4, for all of them before May 11th, and they come out on Sundays. Let's get started. Elizabeth Thomas was born in 1675 and her father died when she was young, so she and her mother, who was only 16 when she gave birth to her, lived alone, educated herself through reading, and became well versed in French and Latin and started practicing poetry. She was quite active in London and Bath within the literary society and was known for her experimentation in the themes of women's rights, i.e. the right to an education. The Forsaken Wife is a poignant critique on the way women were treated and controlled during the 17th and 18th century when Elizabeth Thomas was alive through an attack on an unfaithful husband. It was extremely difficult for women to write and to publish, let alone just sustain themselves, and so Elizabeth Thomas wrote under the pseudonym or the nom de plume Corina to make sure that she didn't scandalize her circle of acquaintances with the belief that she had the right to work as well. This is a fictional poem, Elizabeth Husband had nothing to do with it, however, Elizabeth wanted to show that getting married was essentially like being a transfer of property, so now you belong to your husband, whereas before you belonged to your father, who had control of all your finances, who had control of everything you did. In this poem, Thomas emphasizes the unfairness and the pain and scorns men for their alleged superiority after treating their wives like this and leaving them after already claiming all of their life. Let's take a quick look at the poem overall and the structure. The rhyme scheme is a steady A-A-B-B, demonstrating the fierceness and resolution of the speaker in the heroic couplets, and the meter is a iambic tetrameter. It's a steady righteous anger, punctuated by plosive piece and other sharp utterances, to convey an accusatory and furious tone. Methinks this change you can't afford, one pitying look, one parting word. Humanity claims this is due, but what's humanity to you? There's a touch of irony here in the this change you can't afford, because of course, men could afford to do anything in the society while well, women couldn't. Men had the financial freedom so they could literally afford it and also the social freedom so they could afford to do anything they liked without disapproval and without the risk of ruining their reputation forever and essentially being destitute and in ruin as the wife ends up. But yet, this man can't afford a simple goodbye. He leaves without looking at her. He doesn't look her in the eye, he doesn't grant her pity or say a parting word, he doesn't say goodbye. And humanity and genuine kindness and decency would expect him to at least say like, sorry for ruining your life, or like, I'll try and support you because he knows that she won't be able to sustain herself, and yet he leaves. And genuine decency doesn't require you to be rich or poor, to just have a sense of moral character. And so what Elizabeth Thomas is saying here is that it's ironic because she as a woman who has nothing, she has this means, but he who has everything, he does not have this human decency. The poem starts a bit wonderingly, with methinks, almost like calmly, as if she's just considering like, oh, isn't this peculiar? However, it is also contrasting the fact that, well, she can think while her husband can't. She can process that, well, this needs to be done while her husband just leaves. And at the end, we can really see her anger forming as she asks the rhetorical question of, what does humanity mean to you? It essentially means nothing to you and it's a sort of spiked remark that perhaps her husband is nothing more than an animal because clearly he can't find this decency in himself. The question is also infused with quite a sad tone if you think about it a little bit deeper because we know that her husband loved without a parting word so this is her parting word and she's just throwing it in his back asking him like how could you not listen and yet this is exactly what he continues to do, he continues to not listen. And we also have the one pitying look when parting world, the, pl the plosive piece really emphasize her spitting venom at him. She's so angry and the words come out themselves. It's an explosion of her anger. It's a culmination of everything she feels that you couldn't even look at me, that you couldn't even part from me. And also of course the repetition of the word once. Just once you couldn't afford to say goodbye, just once you couldn't do this, she's expressing her anger at him. And the sejura in between this phrase shows how she's like struggling to gain control of herself, struggling to get the message across. And finally the line humanity claims this is too, of course, is again a reference to the fact that, well, he can afford to just do whatever he wants, not care about humanity, and break the boundaries and 
even the things that society expects, he breaks them with no consequences. Cruel man, I am not blind. Your infidelity I find. Your want of love my ruin shows. My broken heart, your broken vows. In the next stanza, we have a sudden explosion with this Pondi cruel man. Pondi meaning both words are stressed. And it is not only the you, the husband that she's addressing, it is man in general, so cruel man. She shows her solidarity to all the women left behind. She's saying that men who behave like this are cruel because not only is this an emotional blow if their wives love them and they're just like leaving them after cheating on them, but this is also literally scrapping their lives because after being married during the time no man would want to marry a woman who has already been married the father would most likely have nothing to do with her because he would say oh you couldn't even keep your marriage he would probably disown her from here on from this situation it's either you hope that you have a rich relative who's willing to support you or you die and when she says i am not blind there's potentially yet another veiled barb because when the husband left he turned a blind eye to the suffering that he brings but she is stressing that she is not blind, that she can see everything. She finds his infidelity and infidelity is, by the way, like when you cheat on someone. So because of him not loving her anymore, her ruin shows, she links uh, him leaving with her broken future. And in the next line, once again, does a binary opposition of like me and you. So she's left with the broken heart because she cared and he's left only with the broken vows. So for him, this is just an empty word while for her, it is her life, it is her survival, it is the future feelings that she felt. Yet maugre all your rigid hate, I will be true in spite of fate, and one preeminence I'll claim to be forever still the same. Then we have a turn that emphasizes her strength. She is essentially saying like, screw you, yes you've ruined me, but I refuse to stoop to your level, I am better because I am in control of my own fate. You lost your control when you saw another woman and you decided to cheat on me and to throw away our wedding vows, our history but I am still in control. I am the more powerful one. I am the one with the morally high ground. Like, yes, I am destitute now, but at least I remain true to myself. I remain in control. I remain not hysterical. And of course, like women at the time were associated with hysteria and men with the stoicism. So she stresses once again that I am the true man here. I am the one who is truly in control. You are nothing. You are not man. You are, you are not even human. The preeminence meaning superiority is what she claims. So while her husband might have everything else, like the rights, the money, everything, she has the feeling that she has remained and that she will continue to remain and that she will pick up the pieces of her life and move on. She shows her humanity because of course she's upset, but she also says goodbye. This is her pitying look, her parting world, because she leaves on the morally high ground. Notice also how the lines end with the stress and this is called falling rhythm, but before there was actually a division onto like masculine rhythm and feminine in rhythm and since the poem is all about contradictions and women's rights she really she she contrasts this because she uses masculine rhythm to show that she is like the true man it's like sarcastic that you think she's pointing out that it's sarcastic that you believe that man is good when he behaves like this so she is the true honorary man he he's like an animal where she is far from weak because she claims that she's morally superior in her poem as she asserts her anger as she as she yells at her husband, how dare you, but also really says to herself that this is it, this does not define her. Show me a man that dare be true, that dares to suffer what I do, that can forever sigh unheard and ever love without regard. I then will own your prior claim to love, to honor, and to fame. But till that time, my dear adieu, I yet superior am to you. So this next part challenges everything. So show me a man who dares, and dares, she repeats it several times, because she dares to be a woman in this society. She dares to be a wife and she dares to love even knowing that if her husband decides to leave her, it's over for her. She dares to go into ma into marriage and to like give it her give it her entire self. She also repeatedly points out that she believes that no man would be able to suffer what women suffer in this society. No man would be able to sigh unheard because women are looked upon seeing that they struggle after their husbands leave them and yet are still just discarded by society and no one cares. And I think as part of your personal response, you should for sure comment on what you think Elizabeth Thomas would think. I'm guessing that she would be very happy that in our modern society now, women have the rights and women like continue to make their struggles hurt. And once again, notice the repetition of the word claim linking the ideas of property and about who's really in control and going back to the title, the forsaken wife. So forsaken means like given up because girls 
just give up their status as girls and turn into wives their entire identity is being linked to being a wife and so the wife in this poem the speaker is being given up by her husband who just decides that she's not worth it anymore and who leaves her to her ruin but yet she owes the wedding claim of like fame and love and honor and i think to fame means to respect like the idea that you're husband and wife so to understand that you're married now that you belong to each other she even addresses him civilly with my dear adieu there's less of that plosive diction because she merely challenges the reader as well to find someone who who a man who can suffer as much as a woman can and she just says well I am superior now, I yet superior am to you, calmly addresses him with a goodbye, what he didn't owe her because she is not petty enough to not say goodbye. She chooses the onslaught of difficulties, she embraces it and she walks out into the sunset. This is essentially a poem of hope and of resilience because unlike her husband who merely left like eyes downcast without even a goodbye, she chooses to say goodbye and she chooses to go ahead and to make her own living and to decide what to do with her life. Well, this is a sad poem in terms of recognizing that she is going to have a very difficult time. This is also a poem that claims women's struggles and actively encourages people to not succumb to their fate and to take control of their destiny. Alright, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this brief video helped. I have some exciting reviews coming next week on my Instagram at the book reviewing folks. Feel free to DM me. Please like, maybe consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Bye.